Hey soldiers, every now and again, we like to check in with the world's greatest investor, Warren Buffett, and see what he's doing. Not that we're going to duplicate it, but it definitely can be instructive. The man's made a lot of money, like him or not. And, uh, you know, we don't follow anybody step by step because Warren Buffett has a lot more money. He has different motivations, different uh, expectations. So we very well cannot mimic uh, his moves. That would be foolish, but we can take a look at what he's doing and see if some elements of it apply to us. Guys, we're going to take a look. We're also going to talk briefly about the tech sector. Is it starting to do better? Okay, we shall see. Well, I want you to go ahead and enlist. Become a soldier of finance. Easy to do. All you got to do is hit the subscribe button. That's how you enlist and become a soldier of finance. Now, we got some great things coming up, guys, as we get closer to 4,000. Once we get over that 4,000 subscriber mark, uh, we're going to roll out some other uh, things there shortly. Let me know you subscribed in the comments, and I will salute you. Uh, I need you to hit the thumbs up, guys. Let's propagate this message throughout YouTube, and that is a... A passive way to do that. You tell YouTube, yeah, I'm in favor of this content. Go ahead. Let more people see it. Also share this with a friend, with a loved one. All right, guys, let's get started. Now, Warren Buffett, uh, he owns Berkshire Hathaway, the insurance company. They got a lot of companies in there. Dairy Queen, for example, Pampered Chef, uh, Geico, the insurance company. It's just a, a well-diversified mix of corporations in there, okay? Berkshire Hathaway is a wash in cash. Can't find much to buy. So, you know, one of the things that Berkshire Hathaway is, has really made its claim to fame on is looking for stocks that are undervalued but got a good potential for, you know, some upside to them. Well-managed companies. That's what they're looking for. Um, Seas Candy is a small company that... Uh, Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett in particular have been in love with for quite some time. Coca-Cola is yet another, all right? Businesses that, and look, I don't drink nearly as much Coca-Cola as I used to. When I was a lobbyist, we had a kitchen area in our offices, and uh, we could drink as much Coca-Cola or whatever we wanted to, okay? Uh, we had a tab, and they would just, you know, come around and collect at the end of the uh, month. And... Um, I started hitting the bottle, Coca-Cola that is, at about 7 o'clock in the morning. High pressure job. And um, by the time I left the office, I'd had about a six-pack, 20-ounce Coca-Cola. Okay, so I have contributed mightily to Warren Buffett's fortunes. And then when I got home, I had another one. All right, very bad for my health. I don't do that anymore. Although, I do have, I keep a six-pack of the eight ounce glass bottles on hand. When people come over, you know, and that eight ounce, it's just a swallow, okay? And admittedly, I do consume that maybe about once a month, okay? But uh, I just put that out there in case Warren Buffett is listening. Warren, I know you're listening. And uh, you should go ahead and hit subscribe, become a soldier. But hey, if you ever want to give back to those who gave to you, Warren, I have supported Coca-Cola in my lifetime. Uh, stocks are still holding on to their gains for the year. Though investors would do well to ponder what legendary investor Warren Buffett may be doing, or rather, what he is not doing. At the end of the last, at the end of 2022, Berkshire Hathaway had cash holdings alone of 128.59 billion dollars. But how about this for some perspective? Only about 50 or so of the companies on the S&P 500 had a market capitalization greater than the conglomerates, Berkshire Hathaway's, cash holdings. So Berkshire Hathaway's holding more cash than what uh, most companies are worth. All right. Uh, 450 companies on the S&P 500 are worth less, not worth less, are worth less than the cash on hand that Berkshire Hathaway has to put into investments. Great place to be, right? All right. Um, so in other words, Berkshire could buy most member companies of the S&P individually or even a combination of them for cash outright. While he has been looking to buy big, that hasn't quite panned out. 
And we all know that Buffett and his deputy, Gregory Abel, are itching to deploy cash for no investor worth his salt is satisfied with returns on cash over the long term, especially with inflation being what it is today. Warren Buffett is losing money on that cash. Uh, granted, given the nature of Buffett's thinking, he would always sleep well at night with adequate liquidity in hand. We've talked about liquidity before, and you do need some degree of it. Now, I'm sure Warren Buffett does not want uh, that much liquidity. He wants to put that money to work. But this is an excellent example for us as investors that patience is a virtue. Don't let the money burn a hole in your pocket and you know push you to make an investment that is not right for your investment objective, you know, time frames, and so on. So there is an element of patience here that Buffett is ex expertly exercising. And I'm sure at the end of the day, it will be to his benefit. Now they mentioned Gregory Abel, and that might be the individual that takes over for Warren Buffett. Warren is not a young man. Okay. He still seems pretty spry, but um, look, we all have a date with destiny. Okay. But Abel seems to be quite able. All right. In uh, working alongside Buffett and keeping Berkshire, you know, profitable. Uh, to a fair thee well. All right, so uh, they're never going to invest their last dollar in anything. Okay, they're always going to have some liquidity, which is smart. Just from the standpoint of saying, hey, you know, we got to have some liquidity just in case an opportunity arises. All right, and we don't want to have to come out of an opportunity to help us go into another. So we'll have some cash on hand. Even so, it's worth asking the question that if one of the smartest investors out there can't find reasonably priced investments, what makes stocks so alluring as to prescribe an 8% rally in the S&P this year and an epic 19% in the NASDAQ? This isn't meant to suggest that there aren't opportunities out there for those seeking alpha, far from it. Investment horizons, mandates, benchmarks, against which your returns are assessed, all play into the buying decision. Exactly. Everybody's got a different set of variables, okay? And the other thing you got to worry about, well, not worry about, but consider when it comes to Berkshire Hathaway is that's an established company, okay? So they're not going, you're not going to see them doing a lot of this, uh, you know, growth investing in these smaller companies or anything like that, trying to hit it out of the park. They want steady fairly predictable returns from the companies that they uh, invest in. As Buffett is actually fond of saying, economic predictions just don't enter into our decisions. Charlie Munger, my partner, and I, in 54 years now, never made a decision based on an economic prediction. So recessions come and go, geopolitical risk occur, and you can tell if you look at uh, the chart for uh, Berkshire Hathaway, they've been through a lot of history, all right, and just kept on trucking. We make business predictions about what individual businesses will do over time, and we compare that to what we had to pay for them. But we have never said yes to something because we thought the economy was going to do well in the next year or two years. And we have never said no to anything because we were outright in the middle of a panic. Uh, that may be worth keeping in mind, but I would caution you, okay? Now, we are individuals. Berkshire Hathaway is a company that presumably Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Gregory Abel, they want to keep that going long after they have shuffled off this mortal coil, all right? So, th from the standpoint of a corporation, it's got a longer lifespan potential than we as mere mortals. So, what I mean by that is, yeah, for uh, your individual purposes, you may have to be concerned about when a recession is coming. If you are nearing retirement and you believe that the market is going to drop precipitously and possibly wipe out a good chunk of your retirement nest egg, that you will not have time, you won't have another 30 years to rebuild that. Okay, so from the standpoint of individuals, yes, economic issues do come into play. From the standpoint of a well-organized business, 
a business that is going to keep moving after the principals have, you know, left the building, uh, then I definitely see where Buffett is coming from. Uh, I am on the finance committee of my parish, okay? And one of the one of the principles uh, principles that I approach that with is that I am but a little teeny cog in a big historic picture. And I want someone on that finance committee 50 years from now to be able to, they, they won't know who I am, okay? But the stewardship that myself and my colleagues have brought to it today and hopefully will continue to happen generations after us, that stewardship will be evident in the ongoing, uh, the, the ongoing profitability, well, not profitability, but financial strength of the parish. Because look, um, we got to pay bills too, right? And uh, the reality of it is that with eight services a week, we only take a collection at two, uh, at, you know, at two of those. And, um, you know, if you, if you blink, you might miss it. Okay. We don't make a big deal about that at all. All right. So we um, rely on a we're rather small congregation, but, um, you know, I think people appreciate what we do. So I'm making that point because that's the situation that Warren Buffett uh, and Charlie Munger are in right now and that Greg Abel will have to be in. They want this company to last for a thousand years. Now, I will say this, some of your investments that are positioned for generational wealth, if you have kids or grandkids and you think they are worthy, all right? Uh, yeah, you might want that to continue to perpetuate down through the ages. Absolutely. Um, like a piece of land, for example, okay, that you can continually pass down through your heirs. Okay, of course, you might want that to be able to provide uh, ongoing wealth throughout, you know, your lineage, even after you're long gone. So just some food for thought, guys. Uh, I want you to pay attention to what some of these Noteworthy investors are doing. Sam Zell, he's out there talking about, uh, you know, what do you say? Uh, working from home is BS. Of course it is, Sam Zell. Why? Because you are uh, heavy into commercial real estate. Uh, but Sam Zell is someone who should be, you know, given deference to and paid a lot of attention to on the subject of real estate because he's actually... Uh, Great at it and has made a lot of money at it, but the times they are a change. And now Google and uh, Microsoft have done very well in their earnings. So that sector may be, uh, you know, coming back to an extent. Google and Microsoft, they have some hardcore products that, uh, you know, are, are, are essential in many ways. Search, come on, in the modern era, search is essential. Um, it's being challenged by AI, but both those companies have AI. Now, um, Facebook, is it essential? No, not at all. Uh, so I think that they're going to continue to have issues. I think that whole Facebook type of, uh, you know, uh, platform, uh, MySpace proved that you could just make small improvements on that and you could, you know, take it away from the uh, reigning champion. So just some random thoughts on that, guys. Look, I want you to uh, check out all of the videos that we've got on the channel. Start binging the channel because there's some good information, especially in the Evergreen playlist. A lot of what we do is news, but the Evergreen playlist is stuff that is timeless and timely. Check it out. Watch all the videos in that Evergreen playlist. Now, I also want you, Warren Buffett is not a fan of gold, okay? He made a brief investment in a gold miner a couple of years ago and got right out of it, all right? He does not like gold. I do, okay? Um, I got a different thing going on than Warren Buffett, fine. You know who else really tends to love gold? The central banks. Watch this video where we talk about why the central banks, do you know they've been buying gold at the fastest clip that they have in almost a century, okay? And I'm talking global central banks, globally, not just the Fed, okay? So check that out, find out why they're doing that. You might wanna do a little due diligence and figure out if gold has a place in your portfolio. Guys, I will talk to you soon.